Uh, good morning, everyone. It is very, very good uh, to be here with y'all and to be preaching to y'all this morning. Um, like Josh said, I'm not leaving till November. November 5th um, is when the next schooling cycle starts. So you got me for a little while. Uh, it'll be good. It'll be good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> if you didn't know, I am from the Bay Area, California, Livermore, California. And out there, in California, we don't really get these like massive, massive storms like on the ocean, at least where I grew up. We don't have hurricanes, we don't have tornadoes. We have lots of fires, like lots of fires, um, but not a lot of rain. Um, I took this picture, if Mike, you could put that up there. Look at that, that's a, come on, we don't, nobody got no time for storms on an ocean that beautiful, right? That's a, storm, a picture I took out in Santa Cruz, California. Nice, peaceful ocean, we don't need storms out there. Um, but a lot of you, have had experiences with huge storms. Even last night, it was like, I was playing a game, had my headset on, it was raining super loud. I was like, what is that? It was the rain. Um, my parents and my sister live in Houston, Texas, so now they, they know the power of a storm. Uh, even now, they're recovering from Tropical Storm Barrel. Uh, my parents went eight days without power, and uh, it was a little too much for my dog, Roxy. And I remember in Virginia last year, I was on the USS Mitchell for a few weeks. We had um, some huge rainstorms roll in, especially on the East Coast. And I remember even in port, right, you're like tied to the dock, tied to the pier, and the ship is still just rocking back and forth, and it's creaking, and it's loud, and it's dark, right? Storms are loud. Rain's loud. Thunder is loud. And sometimes storms that big or that dangerous can be really scary, and our, and our our text today talks about a storm. I think most of us are familiar with this story, um, but I'll still have you help me read it, please. As per our tradition here, I'll read the words in white. If you could help me read the words in yellow, um, would you guys mind stand in for the reading if you're able for the reading of God's word? <clears throat> so this is Matthew. Uh, what am I preaching? On? Fourteen twenty-two through thirty-three. <laughs> Sorry. Whew. It says immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. And go on ahead of him to the other side. Well, he dismissed the crowd. And after he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. Oh, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. All right, thank you for helping me read God's Word this morning. You guys can be seated. Um, man, so check this out. Like, right before this passage, Drew just talked about this, and I love that he's like, Jesus takes care of his community, right? Jesus had just fed over 5,000 people. He was trying to get some alone time. Right, probably because his cousin John was just beheaded and he needed some time to grieve. But these crowds uh, came to Jesus and he just couldn't turn them away. He had to take care of them. So he feeds them all and now I imagine he's even more tired. So he sends his disciples across the lake. He sends the crowds away and he goes up on a mountainside to pray alone. And I want to pause just for a minute to think about that. Like this isn't even like the main point of my sermon, but I, I think it's remarkably human of Jesus to need some time alone, some time spent in quiet prayer. He was unhurried. Jesus lived an unhurried life. He, he probably saw the storm forming too, right? He's on the mountainside overlooking the lake, and he probably saw the storm forming, and maybe even saw the disciples struggling out there, and he didn't immediately come to the rescue. He spent time praying. He was busy praying. And I think sometimes I forget, especially in the storms of my life, maybe God doesn't answer prayers right away because he's busy praying for me. Maybe Jesus has given me the tools and the experience and the right people to weather the storm for just a little bit on my own. And he knows that the best thing for me is that he can pray for me. But like I said, that wasn't the main point of my sermon. So anyways, back to today's story. So Jesus has finished praying. 
He probably looks out and he's like, oh man, what have these guys gotten themselves into this time? And he begins to approach the disciples on the water. And mind you, it's like really early. It's like 3 a.m. And so the disciples look out across the water. It's 3 a.m. They're in the middle of a storm. They've been fighting this storm all night and they think they see a ghost. And we might laugh, right? Like how could they not recognize Jesus? But I want to vouch for them and say, I've stood on that watch on a boat before and you start to see things at 3 a.m. on the water. Like you, you start to see things. You start to hear things. Yeah, don't blame them. Um, but check that out. So in their eagerness to serve Jesus, they left him behind. In their eagerness to serve Jesus, they set out and left him behind and encounter a storm, right? So earlier in Matthew, Matthew chapter 8, there's a similar story. They're in a storm, but Jesus is in the boat and he's like sleeping again. He's unhurried. Um, they wake him up and he calms the storm. But now this time, this storm, they're all alone. At least they think that. Right, because as unhurried as Jesus was, he was not unaware of their situation. He could see the storm forming. And not only is Jesus Lord over the wind and the waves, he had also given the disciples the tools, the experience, the people to weather this storm for just enough time for him to reach them. Like most of them were fishermen, right? This is not their first storm. They knew how to sail, but I imagine at this point, after trying to fight this storm all night, they're exhausted. Right, so earlier this year, I went rafting with the youth group. You can see me up there with the snorkel. There's Josh somewhere on the left. You can just see his, his sunglasses. There's, there's Alexis. Uh, so we went rafting with the, the youth group and the young adults, and, and shameless plug, like, go hang out with them. Go volunteer and, and do things with them. We have such a fun group um, over there. They're awesome. I learned a lot about what church is uh, from the privilege of, of serving with you guys for the last few years. Um, but we went rafting and man, let me tell you, we had the tools, the experience and the people to successfully navigate the, uh, the river. I, I don't think we lost anyone. Um, and, and that by itself, it's tiring, right? It, and that was on a river with a guide and with a current like pushing you. Uh, and just for a few hours on a nice day, does not in the middle of a lake during a storm in the middle of the night, Right. So these guys are exhausted. They're tired. And so in their, exha- in their exhaustion, in their fear, and in their distress, it's Jesus who makes the first move toward them. And we know what happens next, right? Peter, bold, but maybe a little rash, has to approach Jesus on the water. And it's Peter who, who's courageous but exhausted. <clears throat> he takes that first step onto the water, and then another step, and then another step. And it's Peter who, who's filled with faith, sees the wind, and there's an inkling of doubt. And he begins to sink. Right? And we've had our storms, haven't we, church? And maybe we felt courageous, but exhausted at some point in our lives. I know that I have, have had times in my life when I've been filled with faith, but there's just that sprinkle of doubt, and I start to sink. Kyle, I know that there's been times when you've been filled with faith, and I know you've read Kierkegaard, so you've read Fear and Trembling, that, that jump across the absurd is the hardest part, and you start to sink sometimes. Debbie, Chloe, I know there's been times when you guys have been filled with, with faith, faith enough to step out of the boat, but all it takes is an inkling of doubt, and you start to sink. I could probably name every single one of us in here and, and uh, fill in that statement, but... Uh, we don't have time for that. I know we're hungry. I'm going to Bojo's later, so we've got to get out of here. So I'll just say, Littleton Church, there's been times when we've encountered storms and we've been filled with faith but sprinkled with doubt and we've begun to sink even now. So our congregation doesn't have the same numbers that we used to, the same ministries that we used to. As we're deciding what our future looks like, it can feel like we're beginning to sink. Courageous but exhausted, full of faith, faith, but just that little inkling of doubt, it can feel like we're starting to sink. I think some of us have felt that, and that's okay. It's okay to be honest with what we're feeling, because it's when Peter starts to sink, that's when he reaches for Jesus. He says, Lord, save me, and it's when Peter reaches for Jesus that immediately Jesus reaches out his hand and rescues him. He says, oh, Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt so when we feel like we're starting to sink, we can reach for Jesus. He's only an arm's length away. No matter the storm we go through, individually or collectively, 
Jesus is never too far from reach. Uh, John MacArthur, he wrote this in his commentary. We, we will never find ourselves in a place where Christ cannot find us. And no storm is too severe for him to save us from it. Some believers suffer more than others, but all suffer at some point and in some way. In spite of that, the storm is never so severe, the night never so dark, and the boat never so frail that we risk danger beyond our Father's care. Jesus is only an arm's length away. But the storm, the storm does not end there. Even though Jesus is only an arm's length away, even though Jesus reaches out and lifts us up as we start to sink, the storm doesn't end there. The storm ends. The winds die down, it says, when Peter and Jesus get back in the boat. You got to get back in the boat. Jesus can carry you through a storm, but he's carrying you back to the boat. Well, Tim, whatever, whatever storms we're facing individually, right, or as a congregation, we got to get back in the boat because the safest place to be out in the middle of a lake during a storm is not in the water, it's in the boat. And, and, it, and it might feel like we're in some stormy weather, but let me tell you about the boat that I see when I get up here and look out and, and just throughout my week, right? I've heard of the, 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 the glory days of Littleton Church of Christ, right? There's multiple services, hundreds of people. Um, this, this worship center is packed right? But the church of the past is not the church we are right now. And I've sat in the stress of of recent finance meetings. Remember last year we had to raise $300,000 and taken part in discussions, dreaming what the future of our church might look like, but the church of the future is not the church of right now. So let me tell you about the boat, the church of the present moment. I'm going to use those terms interchangeably, boat and church, right? But when when I say that, I'm talking about us, as the people of God, the body of Christ. The building, right, it's a place, it's a location, but the church, the boat, is us as the people of God. Because when I started here, um, it's the middle of 2020, July 6th, 2020, almost four years to this date, um, I showed up and this church was navigating all the craziness of 2020, COVID, Black Lives Matter, the murder of George Floyd, crazy election year, all of the things, and, and what I saw is you were, you were trying to figure out how to protect and honor your people while still worshiping the Lord, right? We had those outdoor uh, worship services, like staring into the sun, trying to sing. That was, um, But I saw a church that had the tools, the experience, and the people and could navigate that storm back then, right? And as the months went by and the regulations lessened, the church was able to meet again in, in the building, I remember those first Sundays back, looking out and seeing, like, five people. Um, man, I'm not going to lie. That was, that was a tough transition back. Like, I was when I was volunteering with the worship ministry, and I was up here singing, and there was, like, five of us and, like, five of you socially distanced, spread out through this whole worship center. It was like, where are they? Oh, they're way back there. Um, <laughs> that was tough, right? But you kept showing up, and you kept coming back, and you kept encouraging one another to come back. That's because you wanted to be together and you wanted to worship together. No matter what you were facing at the time, as a congregation of God's people, you wanted to be together. Look at this now. And I say that knowing that Littleton has faced some difficult exoduses or two of members, right? Attendance is not what it used to be. But all I've seen and maybe I'm a little naive to say this, but all I've seen is a church that continues to grow and honor the Lord. All I've witnessed is a church that is faithful and wants to reach high, wide, and deep to share Christ's love. We are not the Littleton Church of the past, but we are the Littleton Church of the present that stands on the shoulders of the Littleton Church of the past in order to become the Littleton Church of the future. And again, I'm talking about us as a people, as a body of Christ. And the Littleton Church that I see right now, the Littleton Boat, if you will, has members saying, the women of this church have so much experience and, and just life lessons that they want to pass along through valuable mentoring relationships. What if we started something like Heartfelt Ministries here? And they just did that. The Littleton Boat I see is making space for new leaders, new shepherds to guide us all because we value the wisdom and the perspective of younger generations. The Littleton Boat I see has a preaching minister willing to 
go bivocational in order to help with some of the struggles we face. And has a congregation willing to support him in that. Like, that's not super common. That's amazing what we're doing and how we're supporting one another. Littleton Boat I see as a care ministry through the visit of one, one member to another sparked this like whole domino effect of care visits. And, and we have a prayer ministry that prays each week for us. Like we're a church that prays and believes in prayer. And we're a church that anoints our sick with oil when needed. And we are a church that believes and expects Jesus to heal. The Littleton Boat of today has a food bank started by the Littleton boat of the past, but this food bank today runs out of food on Mondays because of how many families we're serving. Like, what a blessed problem to have, that we run out of food because we're serving so many in our community. The Littleton boat of today with a missions team, right, that despite the things going on at home, despite the troubles at home, still believes in the power of mission work abroad and continues to support missionaries all over the world, that believes that the Spirit of God is not geographically contained, but is working everywhere, always, all at once, and wants to participate in the omnipresent and omnipotent, omnipotent, <laughs> see, this happened to Jovan like three weeks ago, I, the very strong work of God. Um, the little Timbo today that greets each and every one of us as we walk in the doors with a smile and makes delicious coffee from Purple Door, right? The little Timbo today that hand crochets prayer shawls for people. The Littleton Church of Today that has our very own Bob Bevel doing stuff all over the building all the time. The Littleton Church of Today that has an Acts 2 fund strictly to help people in financial need. No questions asked. The Littleton Boat of Today that can both dedicate newborns to God each year. Like, think about that. We have, we have a church that has the cries and the laughters of newborns in our halls. I mean, even Jenny was up here singing with Tisa last Sunday, if you guys saw that. That was awesome. Or we have a Littleton Church that can do that and can, at a moment's notice, also gather together to celebrate the life of those who have been called home. Littleton boat of today that celebrates birthdays and anniversaries and graduations because, Carl, we are what we celebrate, right? Littleton boat of today that opens their homes and their backyards to a bunch of middle school and high schoolers just to sing songs like We Shall Assemble and How Great Thou Art and Sanctuary. All right, we sang the songs last week. The, little, the youth group like loves to worship together. It's so awesome to listen to. And the Littleton church of today that has a worship ministry so full of talent, they could probably release an album. I'm not kidding. And a media team with more knowledge, no offense, Mike, more knowledge of media than sometimes I care to know about. And they can get this thing stuck to my ear. Littleton boat of today that has a youth group that asks me, like in my role as facilities manager, like how, how can we serve the church today? Right? What are some service projects we can do around here? Has members like Kellen getting baptized, right? Inviting friends to church and to camps. They're asking important and intelligent questions about God as they're making their faith their own. This is a very difficult time in a very difficult city to make your faith your own, and they're doing that. Littleton Boat of today that has thousands of people in our community coming to events coordinated by Kelsey. And from that has kids sending, uh, or sending their kids to things like VBS and day camp. The Littleton Boat of today, <clears throat> excuse me, has a young adult group that continues to meet with people that have like left the boat for whatever reason getting lunch with former members of this church. How cool is that? I didn't even set that. I didn't even know about that. I heard about that like secondhand. That wasn't something I set up. That's just who they are. Right? The Littleton boat I see today, despite all the storms, the people of God I know here is a boat, church, a body of Christ that knows how to grieve well and knows how to celebrate well. It knows how to welcome new life into this earth, walk this life together and then honor those who have passed. It's a church that has weathered many, many storms, and through these storms has become resilient and creative and resourceful. But storms can cause resentment. They can make people a little salty. I know a lot of NCOs who have been out to sea too long, and they get real salty. They're resilient, they're creative, especially with the way they can string words together. They're resourceful, but they're salty. So I think the most amazing thing, when I mention all those ministries, the most amazing thing when I look about at this, at this church, at this boat, is not that you're resilient or creative or resourceful. Those are good things. But the most amazing thing is that you've remained compassionate and, and loving. Right? There's love here. And there's joy here. And there's peace and patience and goodness and all of the other fruits of the Spirit are here. And I think the only way 
that that has been possible through everything you guys, we have faced together. It's because Jesus is here in the church with us. He has not abandoned us to the storms. He might have been watching from a distance for a little while and being like, what are they getting themselves into? But he's given Littleton Church the tools and the experience and the people to weather whatever storms we face. And he's been praying for us. I mean, I, I, I get it, right? Sometimes we think that, like, getting off the boat is a better idea. Um, Jovan texted me this quote by John Ortberg saying, if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat, right? But Jesus is just going to look at you and say, you little faith, why'd you doubt? And he's going to carry you right back to the boat, right? Because the boat is the safest place during a storm. You are not meant to weather storms alone. And I'm also not saying, like, if, if this isn't a church you want to be in or you have reasons to leave, whatever, I'm not saying stay here just to stay. I'm not shaming you into staying just to stay. There's no shame if you need to leave. There's no shame towards those who have left. Right? People leave for all sorts of reasons. We can assume all those reasons, or we can ask people, hey, why did you leave? Um, what I'm saying, though, is that this is a good church. This is a good church. This is a good place to be. This is a good group of people to do life with. And not just because of who we were in the past or who we might become in the future, but because of who we are right now. We're in this boat, in this church, in this storm together. And Jesus is right here with us, right? Like we all read earlier this morning, it says in verse 32, In 33, when they had climbed back into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. My church, let me be honest with you. I know we're in some storms right now, for sure. And I know that there's storms we'll continue to face and continue to sail through storms we can anticipate on the horizon. And I know it feels like sometimes we think we need to get out of the boat. And let me say, It takes a lot, a tremendous amount of courage to do that, right? That's like the classic sermon on this text. Peter was the only one who had the courage to step out of the boat. Yeah, well, maybe Peter wasn't pulling his weight the whole time and was actually only one with energy to lift himself out of the boat. I don't know. Um, That's not the sermon I'm preaching today. It's never wrong. It's never wrong to reach for Jesus. He's only an arm's length away. That is never wrong. But where is he going to lead you back? He doesn't take Peter all the way back to the shore. Jesus is fully human too, right? Like the Marine Corps combat fitness test, you got to do like a buddy carry and a buddy drag. A fully grown human adult is a heavy thing to move a far distance. (laughs) Jesus is like, no, I am not taking you all the way back to shore. I'm going straight back to the boat, right? To the other disciples, to the other ones who are exhausted, but also probably awestruck by Jesus. I mean, Peter's courage. And they don't, they don't reprimand him for getting out of the boat right? No, that's not in the text. What does it say? They marvel at the power of Jesus. They get back in the boat and they go, truly, you are the son of God when the wind dies down. Because when we're all back in the boat together with Jesus, that is when the storm calms. That's when the winds die down. That's when we can all recognize and say that Jesus truly is the son of God, to see how far we've made it and to see where we're going because of who we are right now. So with that, I want to please invite the worship ministry back up here to prepare us to leave this place with just a, a worshipful attitude. Um, and just let me say it again. We, we've gone through a lot of storms. We might be in a storm right now. We are in a storm right now. We might try to reach for Jesus, and there's nothing, there's never anything wrong with that. But Jesus has given this place and this congregation the right tools and experience and people to weather storms. And this is a good church. If you're new here, If this is your first time visiting, this is a good group of people to do life with. If you've been around a while, you know that this is a good church, or else you wouldn't be here. Um, This is a good people, group of people. And I'm I'm almost done, okay? (laughs) Uh, This is a good, this is a good church. And Jesus is here. His grace abounds in deepest waters. 
His sovereign hand is our guide. Where feet may fail and where fear surrounds us, Jesus has never failed and he won't start now. Let me pray. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have put such a good body of Christ here in Littleton, well, technically, Centennial, Colorado. Thank you so much for the ministries being done here. Thank you for for leaving your spirit in this place and for the fruits that are emerging from this place. Thank you for the people here, for the people I've gone, and for the people who will show up one day. God, we are just, um, when we reach for you, we know you reach back, that we can get through anything because we have you. Say the praise in your son's name. Amen.